give or take. And although we could be forgiven for forgetting this, occasionally a discovery is made that reminds us all of just how long us humans have been around. Whether by awesome accident or divine design, it seems there's no limit on the wackiness of what can be found here on this planet, past, present, and future. These videos feature the oddest, most unbelievable, and incredible discoveries uncovered in recent times. 15 Strangest Discoveries Found on Earth Witch Bottle During the 17th century, it wasn't uncommon for someone to urinate in a jar, add nail clippings, hair, and pins, and bury it upside down. And it was called a witch bottle. And one was recently unearthed and identified by scientists as being the world's most complete specimen. Researchers found the bottle at a site built in 1861 in York County, Virginia. Inside the Civil War era bottle was a knot of iron nails that had corroded into a ball. The neck of the bottle had cracked, probably because of the weight of accumulated soil since the war. The broken top remained in place. At first glance, one might think a soldier had downed the contents of the bottle, perhaps containing beer or soda, and used it to hold the square nails. The witch bottle was intended to cast spells, often meant to attract and trap negative energy, and was particularly common from the 16th to the 17th centuries. Back then, these superstitious witch bottles emphasized just how frightened people were of witchcraft. The general time period of the bottle coincides with the Salem witch trials, which happened in the late 1600s. Hidden witch bottles dating centuries ago have been found concealed in homes. The practice originated in England and then traveled to North America. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Whatever this creature is in this photo looks too fake to be real. It looks like a space age My Little Pony, a popular horse toy from the 1980s, plucked from Pandora, the fictional CGI world director James Cameron created in the movie Avatar. It has the equestrian face with horns and legs with hooves. Then there's the white fluffy fur with the tail of a dog. And what's up with those blue armored plates along its back? Don't you kind of wish an animal like this actually existed? The truth is that our planet is full of animals that look weird and out of place. Even dinosaurs can sometimes seem out of place in our world history when you sit back and think about how truly bizarre they looked and acted compared to the animals we have today. And if this fantastical creature had a name, what would it be? This is where you get to chime in. Comment below with your thoughts as to what this mythical looking beast could be and what it should be called. And use the hashtag sweet topic when you do. Deadly Mayan Ball Game One of the ways that the Mayan people competed against each other was by playing what has been called the ball game. They used a rubber ball about 20 inches in diameter to play the game which was played on a stone court whose measurements varied. The largest one found so far measures 459 feet by 114 feet. The court had walls that sloped inward, and hanging high on the walls were stone rings. The goal of the game was to pass the ball around without having it touch your hands, and then get the ball to pass through one of the rings. Since the rings were so high and players were not allowed to use their hands, it was extremely difficult to get the ball through a ring. In fact, when a player did manage to get a ball through one, that usually ended the game. The game ended otherwise when the ball touched the ground. The Mayan ball game was a solemn experience filled with ritual importance. Religious leaders attended, as did most chieftains and other government leaders. Sacred songs were sung and played. Other religious activities took place as well. The winners of the game were treated as heroes and given a great feast. The penalty for losing a game was something unusually harsh. Death. The leader of the team who lost the game was sometimes killed. Giant Serpent Mound Maintained within a beautiful park, this weird snake-shaped mound has been designated a National Historic Landmark in the United States. The Great Serpent Mound is a 1,348-foot-long, 3-foot-high prehistoric effigy mound on a plateau of the Serpent Mound Crater along Ohio Brush Creek in Adams County, Ohio. It's the largest serpent effigy in the world. The mound builders of early North America lived throughout what are now the Ohio Valley and Mississippi regions. The earliest group was probably the Adena people, who flourished from 1000 BCE to 200 BCE. They built mounds throughout North America, 
from Wisconsin to Mississippi. The Serpent Mound of Ohio was first reported from surveys published in 1848 by the newly founded Smithsonian Museum. The earliest records say it depicts a serpent swallowing an egg, though another interesting theory suggests that the snake is swallowing the moon. In 1909, a local German Baptist minister proposed another possibility. The serpent, he said, is writhing in its death throes as punishment for tempting Adam and Eve in what he believed was the original Garden of Eden. But still, it's unclear who built the Great Serpent Mound. <laughs> Attack of the Crayfish Clones It sounds like a weird monster movie plot. A ten-legged mutant creature that reproduces asexually, escapes from confinement in Germany, and quietly begins a global invasion. That appears to be the strange but true story of the marbled crayfish, an invasive freshwater species suspected to have been created through a reproductive accident in an aquarium around 1995. It's hard to believe, but within two decades, clones of this voracious animal spread globally, bringing devastation to ecosystems and threatening native species. The marbled crayfish is the only decapod crustacean that reproduces asexually, with the all-female species making clones of itself from eggs unfertilized by sperm. It's been thought to have arisen when two slaw crayfish, imported from Florida for the aquarium trade in Germany, mated. Since its discovery in Germany, the marbled crayfish has spread, and they eat anything – rotten leaves, snails, or fish broods, small fish, and even small insects. The crayfish is a serious pest. Incredibly, just 25 years ago, the marbled crayfish did not exist at all. Now they can be found in the wild by the millions in Europe, Asia, Africa, and North America. Moths can drive Scientists in Tokyo have built a scent-controlled car driven by a silkworm moth. As you can see in the video, the moth walks over an air-supported ball toward an attractive scent. The robot car thing tracks the ball's movement using optical sensors and drives in the same direction. We're living in a brave new future here, folks, and that means that moths can now drive tiny robot cars that are controlled by their own sense of smell. The engine, as you can see, is a rather large rollerball looking like a computer mouse. The moths would scramble or dance across the surface, moving the ball which moved the vehicle. Across seven trials with seven different drivers, the insects piloted the vehicle consistently towards the pheromones, nearly as well as ten other silkworm moths who could walk freely on the ground toward the smell. On average, the driving moths reached their target about two seconds behind the walking moths, although their path was more difficult. The potential application here is for tracking odors to detect drugs or maybe dangerous chemical leaks. The moth car is certainly not anywhere close to being ready for the real world, but the researchers say it's a start for odor-detecting robots controlled by living things with sharp senses of smell. <laughs> tattoo Ferns Are plant tattoos the latest trend? It's not exactly what you think. Ferns are amazing plants. They've colonized every corner of the planet, have been around for hundreds of millions of years, and come in a tremendous variety of shapes, sizes, colors, and textures. They provide endless interest for the botanist or gardener and are full of surprises. For example, not many people know that some ferns can give you a tattoo. The silver and gold tattoo ferns are famed for their ability to transfer an intricate print of their fronds onto the skin. This temporary tattoo is actually the spores of the fern. The underside of the frond is liberally coated in the tiny spores, so small as to be little more than specks of dust. When transferred onto the skin, the spores simply stick through contact, meaning the tattoo is very superficial and can simply be brushed or washed away. In effect, it creates a delicate and eye-catching natural painting that looks like a perfect copy of the fern's elegant frond. The silver tattoo fern and golden tattoo fern are not easy to source for domestic gardens but are sometimes available for specialist nurseries. They're native to the Dominican Republic and so favor a warm, humid climate but they can be grown successfully in large ranges of the United States. <laughs> Transparent Wood As scientists look for sustainable, greener materials to build with, researchers at the University of Maryland have put wood back under the spotlight. The team has managed to turn ordinary sheets of wood into transparent material, which they say is nearly as clear as glass. The invisible wood is also stronger and lighter than glass with better insulating properties. 
So it's no wonder researchers hope it could become an energy-efficient building material. Living in a transparent house made of see-through wood may not be everyone's idea of a dream home, but it could be a possibility in the not-too-distant future. Wood is made of tiny fibers called cellulose, and linen, a glue-like material that bonds those fibers together to give it strength. It also gives wood its brown color and prevents light from passing through it. Transparent wood has been made before, but it was expensive to make and the finished product was brittle. This new technique is so cheap and easy, it could even be done in the garden. The final product is a piece of wood that allows more than 90% of light to pass through it and is more than 50 times stronger. It's also more insulating than glass and may take less energy to manufacture. Plus, the wood would be strong enough to become a structural part of a building. The Town That Bursts Into Flames The village of Canedo di Carinoia prides itself on its tiny size. Nestled in the northeastern Sicilian province of Messina, the village was home to less than 200 Sicilians. Most people who visited the island used to drive through the province without giving it a second look. But beginning in late 2003, a series of bizarre fires brought the village worldwide attention. The first sign of trouble was a series of puzzling electric shorts, unexplained fires, and smoky outbursts that lit nine houses ablaze, driving 17 families from their homes. Technology seemed to lash out violently against its supposed masters. The burning continued until 2004, when a monstrous fire displaced 39 residents at once. The terror was so widespread and unexplainable that people would remain evacuated for months. So the Italian government created a special task force to investigate the situation. The group conducted an extensively thorough analysis. Aerial photo remote sensing, assessment of geophysical and geochemical data, detection of magnometric and electromagnetic fields, radioelectric spectrum monitoring, and more. The results, however, were inconclusive, and these sudden fires still occur to this day. <laughs> Fatberg Fuel Ah yes, the elusive Fatberg. Fatbergs form when people flush unsuitable items down their toilets or pour oils and fats, which set hard and clogged pipes when they cool, down their sinks. The word described as increasingly common scenario in the world's sewer systems, wherein cooking oils and other greases congeal in the pipes, creating sludgy masses that entrap any number of disposed solids. And as you can see, they can become huge, easily. But engineers and scientists have figured out a greener solution. And recently, a 130-ton fatberg blocking a London sewer was converted into roughly 2,500 gallons of biodiesel, enough energy to power 350 of London's iconic double-decker buses for one day. High-powered jets were used to break the fatberg down so it could be sucked up from the sewer. The fatberg was taken to a specialist plant where it will be processed with other fats, greases and oils and turned into biodiesel. The fatberg's other constituent parts, including baby wipes, cotton buds and nappies, were disposed of. Previously, workers either extracted the fatberg out of the pipes and sent it to a landfill or broke it down and put it back through the sewer treatment process. So bringing fatbergs back to life in the form of biodiesel is a far better solution for everyone. Viking Penny In 1957, during his second year of digging at a large prehistoric indigenous trade village on the central main coast, a local resident and amateur archaeologist found a small silver coin. The coin is later identified by experts as a Norse silver penny dating from 1067 to 1093 AD. However, extensive archaeological investigation of the site has revealed no evidence of a Norse settlement. What is a fact is that the coin is minted between 1065 and 1080 AD and that pennies of this type were widely circulated in the 12th and 13th centuries. Some critics argue that the Viking penny should probably be considered a hoax and that it was deliberately placed at the site by the amateur archaeologist. While the site is dated around 200 years after the last described Viking sagas, it's well within the period during which the Norse could have potentially visited North America. The penny's coastal origin has been offered as evidence either that the Vikings traveled further south than Newfoundland or that the coin might have been traded locally. However, the penny was the only Viking artifact found at the site, which, according to substantial evidence, was a hub in a large indigenous trade network. <laughs> Ancient Soup However tasty this ancient soup may have been, it doesn't look very appetizing in its present state. 
a century spent inside a bronze pot have turned the soup green. Archaeologists recently dug up an ancient cooking vessel containing bones and a strange green liquid, the last remains of an ancient broth. The other liquid archaeologists discovered was most likely wine, but it had lost most of its distinguishing characteristics over the years. Both the soup and wine were locked away in a tomb about 2400 years ago. This is the first ever discovery of bone soup in Chinese archaeological history. The pots were discovered in a tomb being excavated to make way for an extension to the local airport. However, this is not the oldest pot found with food in it. In 2005, a 4,000-year-old pot containing noodles was found. The soup and wine likely date back to a time around 475 BC when China was split into seven different states, all vying for domination. The tomb itself probably belonged to either a local landowner or perhaps a low-ranking military officer. Whoever he was, he apparently had a decent appetite, considering he was buried with homemade soup and artisanal wine, or maybe he just didn't get to eat his last supper. <coughs> Crucifix Forest This 328-foot-long religious symbol has been baffling passengers flying into an airport in Northern Ireland. The tree cross can be seen from the sky and has become an attraction for those flying in and out of the airport. And naturally, we need to know who planted it and why it's there. This strange emblem had been growing in secret for quite some time, and for a long time, nobody knew who was responsible for the cross. Using two different trees and the plantation took enormous planning. It's not just cutting patterns in your back lawn. This is sizable horticultural engineering, but the mystery of a Celtic cross, which appeared in a forest near the UK's border with Ireland, has been solved. The forest design was planted by Irishman, Liam Emery, many years ago. However, the tree artist died and never lived to see his work in all its glory. His own wife had even forgotten about it. He gave the gift to the rest of us, and we're going to appreciate that for the next 60 or 70 years. What an amazing legacy to leave behind for generations of Irish and visitors to enjoy. When his wife rediscovered his work, she told the press he just loved things to be perfect, and I think the Celtic cross is perfect for him. We couldn't agree more. Super Strong Spider Silk This spider's wheel-shaped orb webs could range up to 30 square feet in size, some of the largest in nature, and often extend over streams, rivers, and small lakes up to 80 feet across. These giant webs allow the spiders to snare unsuspecting mayflies, damselflies, bees, and dragonflies flying over the water. The arachnid is known as Darwin's bark spider, and scientists recently found out that its web is the toughest material ever made naturally. Spider silks were already the toughest known biomaterials, able to absorb massive amounts of energy before breaking. However, researchers now know that this bark spider has the toughest silk ever, more than twice as tough as any previously described, and more than 10 times stronger than Kevlar, a strong synthetic material. The key to its extraordinary toughness seems to be its elasticity. The silk is twice as elastic as that of other orb web weaving spider silk, the researchers collected a few adult female Darwin bark spiders, raised them in greenhouses, and studied the silk after it was spun. They slowly pulled the fibers apart, and the scientists measured how much stress the strands could take before breaking. This super strong spider silk is a clear winner. <laughs> Blythe Geoglyphs Intaglios, also called anthropomorphic geoglyphs, gigantic human or animal figures drawn on the ground surface, are known throughout the American Southwest, South America, and New Caledonia. These figures are believed to have been made by the first indigenous people who inhabited this region, somewhere between 450 and 2,000 years old. Located in the Colorado Desert in the United States, they're called the Blythe Geoglyphs. Their purpose is a mystery, with some historians suggesting that the human figures represent Mastamo, the creator of all life, while the animal figures represent Hatakuya, who helped in the creation. Over 200 of them have been identified across the region. Incredibly, with the largest figure coming in at 167 feet long, they're difficult to see from ground level and are best viewed from the air. In fact, the figures are so difficult to see from the ground that it wasn't until the 1930s when a pilot happened to look down and notice them, that they were rediscovered by the modern world. The geoglyphs were created by scraping layers of surface rocks and pebbles to reveal a stratum of lighter soil while the displaced material was positioned to outline the figures. These geoglyphs are some of the best in the United States. <coughs> oh. 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 
how NASA rock. Usually, when you see something like this, there's a logical explanation. Yet, the Al Nasla rock formation, located in Saudi Arabia, is a complete mystery. This sandstone block is connected to what looks like an eroded natural pedestal, and it's cut through the middle by a clean straight split as if the rock was sliced with a laser. The lower section of the block resembles what's called a ventifact, geologic formations created by abrasions from wind-blown sand beating against a rock surface. This can create rocks with unusual shapes and very smooth surfaces. It could be an old pressured crack that's been pushed and then pulled apart some, or it could be an old fault line, since fault motion often creates a zone of weakened rock that erodes easier than the surrounding rock. Researchers believe that most likely the ground shifted underneath one of the two supporters and the rock split, and the perfect slice between the two standing stones and the flat faces is completely natural. It's also archaeologically significant because of the ancient rock art that resembles a horse or camel that's engraved onto it. And that's why Al Nasla is one of the most photographed petroglyphs worldwide. These videos make us feel glad to be alive. Our planet is never short on amazingly strange new discoveries. So like and subscribe if you want to see more and share this video with your friends.